This is an introductory video to understand how the integration between Ivy and QuickBooks Online works. To get started, you need to go to your account settings and click on Connect to QuickBooks. At the bottom, there's a button that allows you to connect to QuickBooks. And once you've connected to your account to QuickBooks Online, everything that you create on Ivy will map over to QuickBooks Online in a number of different ways that we're going to discuss here in this video. First of all, it's important to understand that Ivy is a project-based system. What that means is that we monitor and manage all of the income and expenses for any given project within that specific project. That means all the sales and all the purchases will be managed within that project. Here, the project is called Malibu Beach House. When Malibu Beach House syncs over to QuickBooks Online, which is a customer-based system, the project will be called, the customer will be called the project name Malibu Beach House. So if we click here into QuickBooks Online, we will see that the customer name that is synced over from Ivy is indeed Malibu Beach House. A couple things to note here is that if you have an existing customer on QuickBooks Online that you want the project to map over to, when you first create that project, you need to be sure to name it exactly the same thing as the display name in QuickBooks Online. As you can see in QuickBooks, you have a number of different naming options. You can give it a first name, a last name, a company name, but they also give you a display name, which is essentially the name they will display this customer as. And so whatever the display name is in QuickBooks Online, if you want the project to map over to the existing customer, you need to name that project exactly the same way. Also, if you want to keep all of the project finances specific on QuickBooks Online as well, you can also set the project as a sub-customer of a different customer that you already have in QuickBooks Online. So for example, if you had Malibu Beach House that belonged to, let's say, Jimmy Who, and Jimmy Who was already a customer on your QuickBooks account, you can go ahead and click on is a sub-customer and then choose Jimmy Who as the parent customer. Okay? But on Ivy, creating the project does not actually initiate the sync with QuickBooks Online. You have to actually start creating those accounting documents for all the information to go over to QuickBooks Online. And so here we've got proposal 10003. And let's take a look at the different line items. We've got fabric, custom sofa for $200, and then custom sofa for $2,000 with a description of for Malibu. So in QuickBooks Online, we expect to see a proposal, actually QuickBooks calls them an estimate, with the same name, mapping with all of the same information, including the taxes. So let's go over and look at the QuickBooks Online account, and we absolutely see that there is indeed an estimate called PR-10003. If we click into this, we should see a mapping of all of the same line items. Here we go, we've got custom sofa, custom sofa, fabric, and then there was no shipping cost. And you can see that even the tax information came over, all the pricing, and of course the description came over. And you can even see that custom sofa, which is category furniture, is being displayed here on QuickBooks Online as we also map over the categories. Okay? And so now we can see that the two systems are speaking to each other. And let's go ahead and create an invoice. Okay? So if we click on Start Invoice, what this is going to do on Ivy is convert that proposal into an invoice. It's going to show you all of the line items. Just for example purposes, uh, let's add a word here to the description so we can monitor that. And let's click on Save. What we expect to happen when we click on Save is that in QuickBooks, the estimate will now be closed. And there will be a new invoice, again with the same name, that now shows up in QuickBooks Online. Okay, so let's go over to QuickBooks now that we've clicked Refresh. We'll get out of this estimate once it reloads. We can actually see here that on QuickBooks Online there is indeed a linked invoice and we can navigate to that right here by clicking on, uh, clicking on this and it'll take me to the invoice and we expect, yes, that word, that letter, that word house came over indeed and of course the tax rate and the customer is all exactly what we see on Ivy. This is the basics of how things sync over from Ivy to QuickBooks Online. 
when we create that proposal or we create that invoice, we first look for the customer. If the customer exists, we use it. If it doesn't exist, Ivy creates it. It's the same thing for the products, the categories, and the tax rate. Okay? But beyond just building the different accounting documents, most important uh, to ma managing all the finances of our specific projects, QuickBooks Online also has the chart of accounts where we're going to record all of the income and expenses that are associated with these projects. Okay? So to map this out, Ivy has initiated a category-based account mapping. What this means is that on QuickBooks Online, as you know, every single time that you add a new item, whether it's a product or a service, you need to indicate whether that item belongs to an income account, and of course if you're going to buy that item to a expense account or a COGS account. And so what Ivy has done is allowed you to actually skip that step by only assigning items a category. Let me show you exactly what that means. Now, once you've connected to QuickBooks Online, you have a new tab called QuickBooks here in the upper right of your account settings page. What this means is this, what this page shows is that you're actually able to set defaults for the account mapping meaning that you've got products and services that you add to Ivy, whether you're adding them through the product clipper or you're adding them directly inside Ivy. We default for you, based on your own choice, where to send that income or expense based on whether that item is on an invoice or on a purchasing document, like a purchase order or a bill. Okay? So, for example, you could say, I want all product categories to map over to an income account called Ivy Sales and an expense account called Ivy Purchases, and I want all services to map over to income account Ivy Services and expense account Ivy Service Costs. Now, a lot of our users will say, that's fine for those defaults. However, my own design fee uh, I want to actually map somewhere else. Or my shipping fee, I want to map somewhere else. And so you can go ahead and look through this list, which is a copy of the list of your chart of accounts on QuickBooks Online. Find the income account that you want to send your shipping income to. Find the expense account you want to send your shipping expenses to and set those here. Again, if you don't want to send one of the categories to your default account mapping, you simply click on the button to click on Change Defaults and choose a new income and a new expense account for that category. Once you've set this up in the very beginning, you generally will not have to touch this again, and you absolutely will not have to add an income account or an expense account for every single item that you add to Ivy. You simply need to give it a category. Okay, now let's talk quickly about how payments work. Okay, so if we go to that invoice that we just created, and now let's mark a payment, even if it's a partial payment, against this specific invoice. So in your invoice on Ivy, you have a button that allows you to add a new payment. You can either pay on behalf of your, of your client using Ivy's credit card system, and you can go ahead and say how much you'd like to pay. Or let's say your client sent you a check and you want to record a check for, let's say, $1,000 and you want to apply to this invoice of that $1,000 the full amount and we'll give it a reference number of 1234. And we're going to go ahead and click on Create Payment. When this payment gets created in Ivy, it will be associated with this specific invoice and we expect the same thing to happen on QuickBooks Online. So if we go to this invoice, and we click refresh on QuickBooks Online. We expect now to see that the payment has carried over from Ivy and has been applied to the invoice in QuickBooks Online. And when this loads up, we can see that indeed one payment has been made. And instead of $2,616 of the balance due, only $1,000 is due because the amount received is $1,000. If we look at this payment, we should also see that the payment number is 1234, which was the reference number that we applied in Ivy, and of course, it came over.
These are the basics that you need to, do, to, need to know to get started with the integration with QuickBooks Online. First, how the projects map over, but also to understand how all the different elements, whether it's the customer, the items, the tax rate, the categories, all map over to their twins in QuickBooks Online. If you set up the account mapping and understand how projects map over, you shouldn't have any problems with the sync. Thanks so much.